This is Access 2016, Module 2, Part 6. In this segment, we're going to be building table relationships. So let's get into our Riverview database. Now in this database, we have four tables. Now these tables can be related to each other using common fields. So for example, the owner table has the owner ID as a primary key. The animal table has owner ID as a foreign key. Those two fields are identical, so we're able to link those two tables together. Once we establish these links, then we can use those links to get um, information from multiple tables to be included within one query. So let's take a look at some of the relationships. So we're going to start out on database tools. We're going to choose the button that says relationships. The first thing it asks us is to add our tables. So I'm going to go ahead and I want you to add them in this order. So we're going to first add the owner. The next one I would like to add is the animal. Then we're going to add visit. And let's say I thought I was done, so I closed this. Well, now I realized I needed to add the billing, but I forgot to add that table. If you click this show table button, it will open that window back up so that you could then click on billing and add that one. When you're done adding the tables, you're going to close. All right, so we're going to start creating our first relationship. We're going to be creating three relationships. So the first one is going to connect the owner ID to the owner ID in the animal and owner tables. So what you want to do is click on the owner ID in the owner table, just the primary key, hold down the mouse and drag that over the owner ID in the animal table with your mouse pointing at owner ID in the animal table, release the mouse. It should come up showing you the two tables and the field that are common. Now you would expect that these fields would have the identical names and that is not always the case. It does not have to be the exact same name in order to build this relationship. It just has to contain the same information. Obviously, it's less confusing if they have exactly the same field name. But for example, you could have one be called the owner ID and one be the owner number and as long as they were the same content, you can still create this relationship. So let's take a look at what these terms mean down here. So enforcing referential integrity. All right, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. There can only be one record with an owner ID in the owner file because owner ID is the primary key and it must be unique. 
However, there can be several records with that owner ID in the animal table because one person could have multiple pets. So enforcing referential activity will make, say that if I try to add a new animal and the owner ID does not exist, it's not going to let me enter that information. I would have to go in and enter an owner ID information in my owner table first and then it would let me add the related animals. The next thing we're going to talk about are the two cascades. So cascade updates, I'm going to check that. What that does for us is if I decided that the owner ID, let's say I started with number one and two and three and just kept sequentially numbering and then I realized they're not going to sort the way I wanted. So what I should have done is started out with 0001, 0002, and so forth. But now I have all these owners and their related animals in there. So if I change owner ID 1 to owner ID 0001, it's going to find all of the related records in the animal table and update the owner ID in that table to reflect that change. So it's going to force that referential integrity to remain intact by changing both of them. Cascading deletes is a riskier option. We're not going to check it but what we are going to do is understand what it means. So if you check cascade deletes, if I go to delete owner ID 1, it will automatically delete all of the animals that are associated with owner ID 1. And it doesn't even give you any kind of a warning message that that happened. It just does it. Now, if I check the box, that's what happens if I check the box. If I don't check the box and I go to delete owner ID 1, maybe what I meant to delete was owner ID 10. And we were going to delete 10 because they never came in with any of their animals. So we have no animals associated with them. Well, if I deleted one accidentally, it would come back and say, I'm sorry, you cannot delete that record. It has related records in the animal table. And so you would have to delete the records in the animal table first before you could delete the owner record in the owner table. So the cascade deletes gives you that double check. If there are records associated with the owner ID that you are trying to delete, it will say, nope, you can't do that you have to go in and make sure you're going to delete those animal records that are associated with it first. So that's what Cascade Deletes does. We're not going to check that. We want to make sure that it does give us that second chance. And then we're going to go ahead and say Create. If it creates, that means it did not find any records that would violate referential integrity. If you get an error message that it cannot create this one-to-many relationship, what that means is there has to be a typing error. And it won't be in the records that you imported. 
it has to be in one of the ones that you typed. So go through, look at the owner records that you manually typed in, verify that the owner ID is accurate, and then also verify any animal records that you might have manually input, and make sure that there are no typing errors in that record in the owner ID. You will not be able to create a one-to-many relationship if you already have owner IDs in your animal table that do not exist in your owner table. Okay, let's take a look at creating some additional relationships. So we are going to start next by defining a relationship between the animal and the visit table. So once again, we have animal ID as the primary key, and it's over in our visit table as the foreign ID. So I'm going to click on animal ID and hold the mouse down, drag it over on top of animal ID in the visit table, make sure your mouse is pointing to that field, and release your mouse. Always make sure you double check the tables as well as the fields that are being used to create this link. Again, we're going to enforce referential integrity and cascade our updates. But we're not going to cascade deletes. So click on create and it developed that relationship for us. And finally, the last relationship we're going to create is between our visit and our billing. And again, you can see we have visit ID and visit ID. So you're going to click down on visit ID in the visit table, drag it over to the billing table, and release the mouse. Enforce your referential integrity, cascade your updates, and create. So now we have these table relationships created and as we progress into some of our other modules we will be using these tables and the relationships to combine information from multiple tables into the same queries. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. That saves these relationships. The last thing you would want to do before you submit your SAM case homework is to make sure you compact and repair by clicking on File, Compact and Repair. And now you would be ready to submit your database for grading.